right when he said that science is the foundation of managing wildlife. And scientists who manage wildlife are wildlife biologists. And as you're about to discover with our investigator Sophie, it's a pretty exciting career. Just a little bit to the left. Uh, turn your body just a tiny bit. All right, how does this look? Is this all right? Okay, that's looking great. All right. All right, I guess it makes sense to start with the history of all these elk we've been seeing. At the turn of the 1900s, we were down to virtually zero elk. They were extirpated in the state of New Mexico. And over the last 100 years, they've gone from zero to what we have today, which is around 100,000 elk in New Mexico. So a really significant change. I bet they're glad they hired you to turn things around. <laughs> no, certainly not, not me alone, but the, the North American model of wildlife conservation is built upon this idea that where there are seasons, there are bag limits, there are dates that people can go out and harvest these animals. The states have a quota of how many animals can actually be taken from an area. And so we have science that backs what hunters are going out there and doing. Well, this can't be all science. This job looks like a blast. Yeah, it probably looks like I'm just flying out here having fun in a helicopter and enjoying a joy ride on the Valles Caldera, which is beautiful. But what we're actually doing is counting elk so we can bring this data back to our desks plug it into a model and come up with a, with a population estimate for how many elk are actually out here. And so when we do that, then we're able to calculate how many can be harvested in a sustainable way. These elk are so impressive. It must be exciting to manage them. Yeah, elk are a really dynamic visual species that are enjoyable to watch, but I work with a variety of species. Mule deer, bighorn sheep, pronghorn, javelina, which are interesting. These elk are more than just interesting. When they make those noises, it makes my heart pound. Yeah, so when they're out here causing a ruckus and making a lot of noise, what they're doing is they're communicating with one another. And so the bulls are bugling, they're making a lot of noise, they're announcing that they have a harem. What they have is a group of females that they're protecting from other males um, so that they get those breeding privileges. Um, and they're announcing that to all the other bulls around. These bulls are so big and majestic. Hunting them's gotta be a rush. Yeah, there are a lot of things that make elk hunting attractive to different people. For example, I appreciate being able to harvest a wild animal on the landscape and bring it back home to my friends and family for food. Um, other people enjoy bugling an elk into them. They think that's a very spiritual experience. Yeah. And everyone that goes into the high country to hunt elk, they've had an awesome experience. They have stories to share with their friends. Uh, they may or may not have harvested, but they still have a great story to tell. And they've enjoyed themselves out there. Well, I'd like to give that a try someday. But what other things do you do managing wildlife? As a wildlife biologist, we do way more than just fly around in helicopters and collect data and numbers and go back to our office and run the data. For example, out here, we did a capture a couple of years ago for elk, where we captured both calves and adult females, and we put GPS collars on the adult females. Yeah, and it's pretty cool the way that we do it. In the helicopter, we fly and we chase these animals. We fire this net that goes over the animal. It captures it really quickly. We're able to jump out, put a collar on it, um, let it go real fast and see where they're going on the landscape, what they're using, um, and ideally help that inform our management recommendations. Um, that sounds pretty physical. I mean, they are wild animals. Yeah, uh, some of the physical stuff is tackling wild animals. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> Anything from an elk calf, which weighs like 40 pounds, to an adult elk, which can weigh, you know, three, 400 pounds. So yeah, it's, it's, it's physically very intense. Well, I'm sure there's more to it than wrestling elk. Managing wildlife is a balancing act between several things. 
So we don't want too many elk on the landscape. If there were too many elk on the landscape, they would essentially eat themselves out of house and home. Um, and that would destroy the landscape and the habitat for other species. And there wouldn't be as many songbirds or um, other species on the landscape that we also enjoy. Hmm, it sounds like you're managing for biodiversity and healthy ecosystems. It'd be so cool to have your job. Yeah, being a wildlife biologist is very exciting, so I highly recommend it. I would get outside, see wildlife, ask a lot of questions, take classes in science and math, find somebody who does something that you think you would like to do and ask them a lot of questions. Some of the personal rewards of being a wildlife biologist are that you get to be in these beautiful places to do your job. You're being paid to be out here, for one. But at the end of the day, what I appreciate most is being part of something bigger, being able to see that a population of elk or whatever it may be is part of a larger ecosystem and that ecosystem is functional. So playing my part in you know, making sure wildlife is here for future generations and that intact ecosystems are there really benefits people as well because we're part of the ecosystem also. Anything else? One of the great things about being a conservation professional today is the diversity of people that are in this profession has changed drastically over the last 30 years. We come in all shapes and sizes and we can still do the job. I highly recommend becoming a wildlife biologist. <laughs> No kidding, it's going to be high on my list. What other professions offer careers in the great outdoors? <laughs>